go all the way back to 1990, you know, each SEC school got a check for $1.3 million. <laughs> you know, we're getting ready in 2024 to get a check for $68 million. So, you know, this game has exploded in probably the last 15 years, I would say. <laughs> All right, welcome in on this Friday. Hope you're having a great one. That was Billy Napier, the head coach of the Florida Gators, the new head coach of the Gators, thanks to Sirius XM for the audio. Talking about big money there, Coach Napier. We're going to be talking a little bit about that. Welcome in, Maze and Blue Reviews, uh, Michigan football today. Uh, we are live weekdays at 1 o'clock, talking about the latest in Michigan sports, wherever you're watching, listening, in uh, you're live, you're listening to the feedback, uh, replay. Uh, uh, great to have you with us here. If you are watching live, plenty of ways for you to get involved by using the feedback. We, le- we read those uh, as they come in on the show. Also, if you're on Clubhouse, the ability, we read the feedback there. Uh, we also uh, will take your call. Put your hand up if you want. I think that's uh, the way it's done there, Clubhouse. Go ahead. We'll uh, we'll take your feedback that way as well. Well, what are we going to be talking about uh, today? Well, we've got uh, Michigan football on tap, and well, the the Wolverines having a pretty good off season after a really good season last year. Is there anything not to like about Michigan football right now? Think it over. You have to nitpick a little bit because the first thing that comes to my mind, is there anything not to like about Michigan football? No, everything's going great. But so we'll nitpick it a little bit. Also, towards the uh, end of the show, I have a top 10 all-time TV series, and I am down to my uh, number eight uh, top all-time TV series. We'll get to that coming up in this show as well but before we go any further let me tell you about our new sponsor and support for maize and blue review is brought to you by manscape who is the best in men's below the waist grooming their products are precision engineered tools manscapes performance package the ultimate men's hygiene bundle join me and over four million men worldwide who trust manscape with this exclusive offer for you 20% off and free worldwide shipping with the code TMBR at manscaped.com. You got a graduating senior coming up, high school, college. This makes a great gift in addition to the cash. How about send them the ultimate men's hygiene bundle? Uh, They'll remember you. They'll thank you forever. Get 20% off free shipping with the code TMBR at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Use the code TMBR. Unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for the job with Manscaped. So today, mention, there you are. If you're on uh, Clubhouse, see people checking in, you can uh, leave your feedback there or fire us off uh, a call if you want to as well. Now, the one thing Billy Napier, the, the head coach at Florida, was talking about going back and you, you just see how the the money has gone from a pretty good, a really good, to just astronomical. And so if, if there's a few people left saying I, the students, you know, they don't, these players don't deserve any money. They get their, they get their scholarship. They should just be fine. Uh, that's uh, that's the past. That's not happening. And you know, the, the numbers that Napier was talking about, you start adding some of those up. That's just TV money. You know, the big 10 right now is negotiating their new TV deal. If you look, I don't have the exact number, but it's over 50 million dollars per school in the Big Ten that they get from TV revenue, over $50 million per school. That's just for TV. We're not talking about ticket sales for home games or merchandise or anything else that involves in that. We're talking about just straight TV money. You know, TV money is where it's at. <laughs> you know why? $50 million in the Big Ten negotiating the deal that they have right now. You, you heard Napier talking about uh, 2024, how I think he said $64 million per SEC school. The Big Ten, you can uh, you can bet on the Big Ten. There, there were some estimates that uh, the Big Ten, each school would be getting double 
the amount. So you could say a hundred million per year per school. And you saw a, a few people say, well, no, no, it's not going to be that, but you can expect it to be more than 64, maybe not a hundred. So oh, 75 to $80 million when the big 10 um, soon releases that they have uh, come to an agreement with a new television deal, Fox, maybe a streaming service, whatever else it is. And these schools are, are going to be just, uh, you know, they just can't do anything about it. You know, like somebody's handing you a check and saying, Hey, you know what? For the, in addition to all the ticket sales and everything else, just for us, uh, you know, uh, telling you to play a game at eight o'clock against a, a team you're going to beat by 50, uh, which we'll get to coming up. Here's, here's $84 million. Do with it what you will. And uh, it, it, that's something else. So, when you think about is what uh, is everything going right for Michigan? What would you look at? What could, what could you say that um, if you know if there was anything and you have to nitpick about if there's anything wrong, you know, with uh, with Michigan football right now? I, a good thing to do if you're 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 thinking everything's going great is talk to some of your friends that are not Michigan fans and then talk to some of your friends specifically that are fans of uh, your rivals and they'll tell you what's wrong with Michigan football. They, uh, I, I did that last night and my friend said, well, you had a pretty good season, but you got blown out by, uh, uh, by Georgia in the orange bowl. So let's examine that, you know, what's wrong with Michigan football. So yeah, they, they had a good year by beating Ohio State, and not just beating Ohio State, but beating them convincingly, convincingly. not only beating them convincingly, but also uh, being able to then win the Big Ten, which is important because, you know, you can go back in the, the history of Michigan football, and, and Michigan has had some great wins over Ohio State. It wasn't that long ago. I could say a long time ago, but it wasn't that long ago where Michigan – controlled the series, uh, not to the extent that Ohio State has recently, but you know, they had a, a, a pretty long, dominating winning streak when John Cooper was the coach at Ohio State the first six years or so of uh, of when Lloyd Carr was the head coach. Michigan dominated Ohio State. didn't matter what kind of team Ohio State had. Michigan you know, was going to beat them. But just like those, the, the game in 95, the game in 96, Michigan won those games. Ohio State was number one, number two in the country. Great wins for the Wolverines in their, in their games that go down that you talk about forever. In 95, you know, Tamunga Biaka Batuka had 313 yards. The following year down at the Horseshoe, you had a, a, a number one Ohio State team. And uh, Sean Springs, their corner slipped high streets, uh, you know, took the, uh, a short pass the distance. And Michigan ended up beating, I think, 13-7, 13-6. Great win. And one that is uh, still talked about to this day. Uh, but in those years, Michigan, there were four lost seasons. It wasn't until 97 when Michigan went undefeated. And then they were playing Ohio State. And, you know, we all remember that game. One of the great, uh, in my mind, the, the greatest. 69. Uh, I wasn't alive yet. Uh, 97, the game against uh, Ohio State. You know, Woodson taking back the the punt, the greatest uh, Michigan Ohio State game in my lifetime. But so that one was huge because, of course, Michigan. It was to win the Big Ten. It was to set themselves up to play for the national championship. And so that's why last year's win was so great. But so th did it take away from the season? When you say what's wrong with Michigan football with them getting embarrassed, you can make a case. That was my that was my friend's words last night. They got embarrassed by um, by Georgia. I think if um, if Michigan would not have beaten Iowa in the Big Ten championship game, the tone to this offseason would be much different. I would be sitting here saying, eh, "Everything going great with the Wolverines." I'd say, you know, they, they got the monkey off their back and being able to beat Ohio State, which was huge. And it was uh, an awesome win. And it was a great setting and all of those things. And the, and the Wolverines played well. But they needed to, you know, finish it off the following week. And we know that they did. That helped so much. It enhanced the win. Like, Michigan 
wins over Ohio State stand on their own, but beating Iowa and winning the Big Ten, that validated more uh, the victory. Now, if they would have been able to go somehow into the college football playoffs and and beat Georgia, it would have, you know, then you're getting in the territory of once-in-a-lifetime type opportunities. We would have talked about last year. It's going to be talked about forever anyways, but it would be talked about um, in canonizing fashion like 97 is. And it's it's going to fall just short of that. So you know, what's wrong with Michigan football? Well, going back and, and getting that experience, I think how things play out over the next couple of years, you know, just like beating Iowa validated or enhanced that game more, if Michigan in the upcoming seasons are able to get back to the college football playoff and they use that experience and you can remember that experience, like, okay, you know, they got there. And then the, the next time, like if Michigan somehow, if we just sounds nice and it feels good to think about, I'm sure if you're a Michigan fan, let's just say Michigan gets back. They win the, they beat Ohio state again. They go to the big 10 championship game. They win that. And they go to the college football playoff again. Uh, this time, you would expect a a better game. You would expect a closer game. You might even expect, like, you know, they have to win it, you know, to, to validate some things. So uh, there's something to that. You know, yeah, the, the very end. But um, considering how long it had been, what, 16, 17 years? Since Michigan had won the Big Ten, uh, considering how uh, infrequently they were beating Ohio State, and to do that, to do both of those, and then just get their first taste of Indianapolis and the college football playoff, uh, it's still ultra successful season, and you know you you don't sit and uh, agonize. Although you know the New Year's Eve, you know it sucked. The game, you know, sucked. It, it was over really quick. But, um, but yeah, so you, you move on and you turn the page. What else is wrong with Michigan football? This is a nitpicker. You can say the, the non-conference schedule. And last year at this time, if I was uh, sitting here staring at this camera and talking through this mic, I would say, oh, I'm really looking forward to that Washington game on September 11th. It's going to be a night game. You got the Wolverines and the Huskies and I'd be talking about and, you know, glowing fashion about, you know, our, you know, and, and missing the opportunity because of the pandemic. I was planning on going out to Seattle, to Husky Stadium, you know, with you. I've been to Seattle. I've been by that stadium. There's, there's really, uh, it's one of the most gorgeous settings for college football. I was looking into uh, tailgating out on a boat, sailgating. I mean, that, that was going to be awesome. But then, you know, you have a, a power five opponent and, a, you know, a, a big name power five opponent. You know, this wasn't uh, Washington State or Oregon State. You know, it was Washington. Now, it ended up not being a, a big time uh, opponent because Washington was down. But you didn't know that. In fact, you didn't know it until um, September of last year when they lost, lost to Montana. But you, you go to this year and you look at the non-conference slate and – you can you can look at it, and you know some people. I'm holding my nose. You, know, you can look at Colorado State at Hawaii and UConn. And you, and there's a lot of people that are going to hold their nose. People that buy the tickets for those games, they can look at it and say, "Hey, can't wait!" You know, for that non-conference slate. Like, in which one of those games? And, and all of them, you can be like, "Hmm, yeah, you love Michigan football. You love the openers. You love night games. Uh, you love just going down there." But you know. Red letter games and big time opponents. Uh, that's really what makes it. Now, scheduling three cream puffs and three automatic wins. That's what Michigan has done. If they didn't have the season that they had last year, I think we would be uh, criticizing potentially that schedule more. And it's not just a one off, because if you look, it is a two off. If there is such a thing, I, I don't. Actually, I've never heard anybody use a two-off. But not only is uh, Michigan uh, scheduling three automatic wins this year with Colorado State, Hawaii, and UConn, they're also scheduling three super easy wins next year. 
with all due respect to East Carolina, UNLV, and Bowling Green, guess what? Michigan's going to be 3-0 and this year. They're going to be 3-0 and next year. I guarantee it. So this can get back to a lot of different things that you can debate. And I hear the arguments all the time. Who cares who they play? I just want wins. So other teams have done it. I'll gladly take just the three victories and I don't want to, you know, a victory is a victory. Who cares? Who's it against? Uh, And, you know, Ward Manuel and the, uh, the athletic department loves to hear that. And across the country, they love to hear that. It's like, they know, they know that there's some folks who just like those W's. They don't care who's coming in. They'll pay their money full freight, whatever it is. Just um, forget it. Just give me those dubs. And, you know, I'm not here. This is, again, this is a, a nitpicky show. I'm nitpicking, you know, if everything is going great about Michigan. Well, you know, seemingly it is. But if you want to nitpick, you go to last year's uh, Orange Bowl game and you go to this year's and next year's uh, conference schedule. That's nitpicking. And is it fair? It is. I think even the... Even the Michigan fan who sits back, maybe that doesn't go to the games. But, you know, would there be a Michigan fan that goes to the games and be like, I don't care, I just like the victories. Let's see them, you know, set themselves up, you know, and, and win it all. That's what it's all about. It's not about entertaining me in the non-conference. It's about, you know, trying to get back to the national championship game. And this is going to help. Scheduling three victories, scheduling a, a game where you might lose, you might lose it, you know, could be the argument. Actually, that I think that is the argument. <laughs> you go and play – a uh, let's say that was uh, instead of uh, you know Colorado State, I don't know it was, it was USC was coming in, or like I put that schedule up, and I don't think these games are going to happen in 2025. Michigan is set to go to Oklahoma. Uh, actually, if you look at uh, 2024, Michigan is set to go to Texas. So actually, this is the the pretty good argument for these next two years of playing these super soft schedules because the two following years right now, although I think these are off the board, I don't think Michigan's going to play Texas. I don't think they're going to play Oklahoma. But at least right now, you could say, yeah, they've got two super easy seasons because look at the following two years. They're going to Texas. They're going to Oklahoma. You know what can happen in those years? They can easily lose those games. We don't know what Texas is going to be like, but you know, could Michigan easily? Yes, we don't know what they could easily lose to uh, to Oklahoma. I don't know if Michigan's ever been to at Texas or at Oklahoma. It hadn't been in my lifetime. So maybe they have. You got to go back a long time. I don't remember Oklahoma coming into uh, the Big House either. Either thing with the Longhorns, but now that those two teams have uh, joined up with the SEC. Your guess and my guess is that that's not going to happen and there's not going to be any, uh, any divisions in the Big Ten and all that kind of stuff. Th- these games uh, are likely not going to happen, but there's your good argument again for people that say, wow, man, Michigan's playing the softest schedule ever this year and next year. And you can say, well, look at the following years, at least right now. You don't have to You don't have to add right now. You can just say the following two years, they're going to Texas and Oklahoma. Okay, the third nitpicky thing about uh, is everything just going great with Michigan is um, recruiting. And recruiting right now is not going great. It is Memorial Weekend. We are heading into Memorial Weekend, so... If we were heading into Labor Day weekend and Michigan was still, I think, rivals, don't hold me to it, but I think they're ranked about 15, 16 right now. If we get to Labor Day and Michigan is still sitting there at 15 and 16, I think the the criticism is, uh, oh, I, I would say more than fair. I don't know if it's, it, it's fair to talk about right now. Is it fair to say Michigan's not getting the job done in recruiting? It's like, well, uh, it's it's early still. And I know Notre Dame has got, done a, a great job. And uh, I, I know some other schools, even in the Big Ten. Ohio State almost always does a good job in recruiting. It seems like Penn State, is uh, they did a good job last year. They're off to a good start here. Getting off to a good start 
Would I rather get off to a good start than a slow start? Yes. Uh, but it, it's how you finish. In, in sports, it's always how you finish. And look at recruiting. And we know that we have name, image, and likeness in play right now. And we don't know exactly how that's going to affect Michigan. I think Michigan had two things over the last week that raised their profile. One, they're allowing players the ability to use the block M if they want to come to an agreement. Uh, that's big. And you also had the imagery of uh, their two interior offensive linemen driving around in a Lambo. You know, Trevor Keegan, an offensive guard for Michigan, uh, signed a name, image, and likeness deal with Lambo. Come to find out, the guy that owns that uh, Lambo dealership is a Michigan grad. Makes sense. But the imagery, it's like driving around in a, a Lamborghini. You're a high school football player, and you just say, you don't have to say, um, you know, here are the keys if you come and are part of this recruiting class. You just say, hey, guess what? You have the opportunity to drive a Lamborghini next year if you want to come to Michigan. Just, to, just in the wording, just uh, how you phrase that. And I'm talking about recruiting right now because the the way that name, image, and likeness is uh, – evolving you know i could come back here on monday and start talking about it and it, it, you know we might have a lot of different things to say you uh you know you'll read if you've been paying attention this week i, I think the big story name image and likeness wise it was uh, of course it was um jimbo and and saban and paying players and all that but then you had uh lane kiffin who did an interview and he said 100% of the kids in high school now, or they're just they're just worried about name, image, and likeness. They're worried about how much money they're going to make. How are you structuring structuring my name, image, image and likeness deal? So you know, Michigan understands this, how far they're going to get into it. But you see there, uh, do I think they're going to say, hey, we promised giving you a Lamborghini? No, but do I think they're going to say, hey, look here, you have the opportunity to have a Lamborghini. Very small wording. But saying that you have an opportunity to have uh, a dealership uh, give you a Lamborghini color of your choice uh, is different than saying, hey, if you come to Michigan right now, you can have a Lamborghini. Small thing, big thing. How that plays out with recruiting, I'll be happy right now. You might not be. Michigan finished eighth in rivals, pretty close. So they had a top 10 recruiting class. Last year, if you could tell me Michigan can get another top 10 recruiting class, I think um, that would be okay. Now, considering they won the Big Ten and beat Ohio State for the first time in forever, I, I think hoping that that was going to pay off on the recruiting trail and hoping that Michigan was going to get a top five recruiting class is very fair. If Jim Harbaugh and the Michigan football staff was uh, sitting around and listening to us and you said, hey, Jim, last year you guys finished uh, top 10 after beating in Ohio State, I would think that they would have that expectation. I would think that that's what they're trying to do uh, themselves. But navigating it, doing it, uh, using the name, image, and likeness, the structure, uh, on, uh, it's all new. How are they going to do? We'll see. But it's still, I, I don't think that's letting them off the hook myself. Now, if Michigan finishes, let's say they finish 20th right now, if we're sitting here in, in February, that, that signing day, and it comes through and Michigan's ranked 20th, and say, you know what, they uh, they missed a golden opportunity. They name, image, and likeness, the other school. I mean, all those things obviously are going to be fair right now. But right now, if you want to nitpick it, I think you can talk about recruiting, but then you just heard how I went through it and how I'm looking at it. Uh, how about you? Uh, here's Paul on the feedback. He says, I'm just happy if Michigan goes to the Rose Bowl. I'm old school. Yeah, I get that. Like, it, it's um, it's beautiful. You, you understand. I went out there once for the Rose Bowl, and it was uh, 2004. Michigan ended up losing the game against USC, but you get out there, you, you go see the Pacific Ocean, and – you know, you you go out and you walk up to that stadium, and there, I don't even like. I never really thought that I, I I didn't like the Beach Boys, but you know, here I am tailgating 
you know, down in that um, valley where the Rose Bowl is at and, and the sun's shining a little bit. And, and then you hear some, some beach boys and you're just like, you're just mess, but you know, I remember Michigan losing a game. Usually Michigan loses a game. It's like, no, oh, it's uh it's not a good night and it's not a good week. And you know, it's not a good enough season, but you know, you go out to California, you really get why the people out there, they don't care as much about sports. You know, Michigan lost that game. The next day I was down to San Diego hanging out at uh what's that island, Coronado. Hanging out there as the sun went down, you know, on the beach, thinking, uh, who cares about anything? All right. Paul, you start talking about the Rose Bowl. That's the kind of story you're going to get. But those are the nitpicky things. What's wrong with Michigan? Well, they got blown out uh, in the Orange Bowl, even after the great year. Uh, that non-conference schedule this year and next year, you can uh, you can complain about that. That's fair. Don't let anybody tell you that you can't. And then uh, recruiting. Is there a reason to be concerned right now? I don't think so, but is there a reason to question how it's coming along at this point? Yeah. I, mean, <laughs> I think you could always do that, right? So, yeah, those are the nitpicky things for, for Michigan. Okay. We've got some other things for you here. And it involves what I told you was going to happen uh, earlier earlier in the show. There's that non-conference slate again. I have uh, put together my top 10 favorite, favorite TV shows of all time. And I started with uh, number 10 and counted down to number one. If you were watching earlier this week, I talked about Sons of Anarchy. I took the SOA. Sam Crow over Ozark and Orange is the New Black, who were also in consideration, would have made a top 25. At number nine, I picked Dexter. And uh, I considered The Walking Dead, TWD, and Stranger Things. But in the end, I went with Dexter. There's Dexter New Blood. Now, on to number eight. Favorite TV series uh, of all time for me. And I go to... Downton Abbey. I picked Downton Abbey over the crown, which I enjoyed. And if I had a top 25 list, I would have the crown in there. You get six seasons, 52 episodes. So you get 52 hours of Downton Abbey. Uh, They have since the, um, since the show has concluded a couple of years ago, they did a, a movie after the fact and I enjoyed the movie and uh, is it just today or this week they have released another movie with Downton Abbey. And so since I liked all 52 episodes in six seasons and the first movie, I'm guessing that I'm going to like this, uh, this next one as well. Uh, It's a little bit different. It's, it's, there's nothing like, um, you know, the, you know, sons of anarchy and uh, the Dexter. Uh, This is, you know, the, this is uh, uh, much easier, not not so much uh, killing and, you know, that kind of stuff, murder, all of that. But uh, this is very well done. I, uh, since I have it in my top 10, you can tell that I am endorsing it. Uh, my wife and I watched uh, this. I, I've never, I haven't rewatched it, but I don't know if there's a, a series in all of these where you can look at the cast. I think this is season two that you have, there's like 20 or so uh, actors in it. I like them all. I really like uh, the wife. Is she the greatest actor, the greatest role? Not really. And there are a couple others you say, yeah, I don't really like. But for the most part, I root for the people upstairs. I like the actors downstairs. And I don't know in a cast, again, out of a TV series if I've ever went through and, and have liked as many um, cast members in a series, but it gets a definite thumbs up for me. And that gets me to number eight in my top 10 TV series of all time. Don't forget. You can uh, talk Michigan all the time on maize and blue review. Join us at michigan.rivals.com. I'm hanging out on uh, the post uh, posting boards day and night. 
Oh, well, looking for Michigan things to talk about and discuss. It's not just Michigan. There'll be some off topics that uh, you will get into other sports, but as you might guess, uh, it has a uh, big time Michigan focus. And with Father's Day coming up, you're, you're somebody that's like, you know, I don't really know what to get my dad. Sliding your dad a subscription to the Maze in Blue Review, uh, if he's a Michigan fan, would be golden. Uh, all right. Uh, we're on YouTube. We'd like you to subscribe to us there. Uh, follow us on Facebook. Do the same thing on Twitter. You can watch the, the shows on uh, those two platforms. Uh, uh, we're there posting pictures on Instagram. I see Josh Henschke uh, doing that. And I run the TikTok feed. And I, I've got about a half dozen uh, TikToks up there that I'm proud of. So uh, take a look and tell me what you think on the TikToks. And if you're listening to any of our podcasts, do all the things like rate them, review them and leave comments. Those things are appreciated. If you do that, uh, we're able to keep all of this going and coming at you every day. Got some exciting things going on. Hope every uh, one has uh, an enjoyable uh, Memorial weekend. And, you know, we look back and uh, we reflect on those that paid the ultimate price. And uh, I will be with you. I'm thinking I'll be here on Memorial Day. So a Memorial Day special. Uh, until then, everybody uh, enjoy the rest of Memorial Weekend. And that'll do it.